Welcome to the Next Up Recovery Podcast. We call this more than recovery because addiction is so much more than just getting clean from our addictions, our strongholds. It's, it's really finding our purpose in life and, and that's what we're here for each and every day. I like to say that we have three, three purposes here at the Next Step Recovery Podcast. The first purpose is to encourage people, to encourage those who are struggling in their addiction or, or just in life. It doesn't have to be an addiction, it could be anything. So we wanna encourage you. Number two, we wanna educate you. We wanna help you help other people. We wanna help you help others. And then finally, we want to expand our reach. We want to expand our impact. We want to expand our partners. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to a great show. All right, well, welcome back to the More Than Recovery podcast. Today, I've got my good friend, Max, and I was just talking to Max here beforehand, and uh, it's Friday, and Friday is usually Max's day off. That's true. Uh, from the yeah. uh, corporate world, and he just informed me that I stole him away from his fishing buddy today. So now I feel really bad. Well, Max. you know, <laughs> there's always another day. That's, well, and that's the, the, that's well, the weather's getting you know. great. That's right. And the fish are probably the bass starting. are waking up. Yeah, they're that's waking right. up. And what's the water temperature need to be? Oh, 60 degrees is good. 60? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 60 yeah. plus is, is when they really start turning so, on in spring. So. Yeah. So you're missing out on a great day. Oh, yeah. I know. Tomorrow it's going to rain probably, and uh, I'm no, sorry. No challenge. Man, no challenge. I feel bad. So uh, I have been trying to get Max to come out here for a while to to do this with us, and uh, I appreciate Max. Max is a good friend, sits on our board, our Next Up uh, Recovery Board uh, as a board member and has been a great friend of mine for we were I was talking to Mark about it earlier, probably 2011. Right. 10 plus years. Yeah. yeah. 13 Easy. years, probably for Max, 13 years too long. And, ah. um, but uh, just uh, had lunch together Tuesday and, and just really appreciate Max and Susan, his wife and his family. Got a daughter getting ready to get married. So lots of excitement there. Well, I, I just appreciate that, Todd, and, and you've been a great friend to us and just an encourager throughout, and, and we have a great appreciation for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same here, same here, and it's uh, and Max can be, you know, you, what, good thing about friends is Max, uh, he can be really honest with me. He told me the other day that I'm a terrible decision maker. No, he said I'm a slow decision man. I am. I'm a slow, slow. <laughs> I frustrate him so much sometimes, just like I frustrate my wife with my slow decision making. So, but but the 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 good part of that is is that you make solid decisions. Yeah, it just you takes know. me a year to make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this would have been a great decision, Todd, if you made it a year ago. You know, yeah. but hey, it's. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. That's great. Well, Max, we you know we we talked the other day about a topic, right? And part of the the goal of our podcast is to bring you a variety of topics, not just addiction recovery. Uh, the last uh, the last one we recorded with my wife was on raising children, you know, mm. and um and how my wife did that with me being gone so much and yep. um. Yep. And so today we're going to talk about a, a topic uh, that probably all of us deal with. And we if we're if we have a pulse, we're dealing with challenges in life, always uh, trials in life. And, and how and how if do we allow those challenges and those trials to draw us closer to God or, or push us away? Right. That's right. Max. And that's right. And, and so I, I know last night I shot you a, a few questions and I don't even have those in front of me. I, I don't think I do have one here. You know, the first one I think I shot you was, you know, so Max, how do how do how does pain and challenges and trials, how do they draw us closer to God in your and, and obviously you're going to use your own experiences here, you know, or. Well, yeah, you have personal experiences that do that. And uh, I grew up as a preacher's kid. Right. Um, special challenges that come with that. But um, as an adult, you know, the, the challenges come as a parent. Uh, they come uh, from siblings when they have adult issues. Right. Yep. And, um, and many of those. And, and one of the things that I have learned through challenges and pain in my life is that uh, we need to be close to God. And yeah. he's used that to draw me closer to him. Uh, I came prepared with James 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourselves to the God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, that's not the entirety of verse 8. Right, right. That's close enough. Yeah. 
And uh, mm-hmm. one of the things that I have learned is that I need to establish patterns that draw me nearer to God. Yeah. I need to have patterns in my life that help me to do that. That's a great point. Yeah. I, I've got to establish patterns in my life that draw me closer to God. I, I shared this with the guys at Next Step the other day. It, it, we all have goals. Right. And the goal is great. And you might, you know, I've run, I've run a few half marathons. I've run one marathon and we'll never run one again. Um, some 10 K, some five K, you know, and you might set out with a goal to run a marathon. Right. And, uh, and, and you don't just get up one day and say, I'm going to run a marathon. Right. What do you have to do? You prepare. Of yeah. course. You train. Yes. You have a plan. Right. You set a pattern. Right. right. You set right. a pattern for training. I'm going to get up every day. I'm going to go run this many miles on this day. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run this mm-hmm. many miles. So there's a plan and you set up a pattern. You set up a system. You set up a system in order to achieve your goal. And then you achieve the goal. And that's great. But really what's more important was the system you established. The pattern mm-hmm. that you established was the important thing. Yeah, you accomplished the goal. But then once you accomplish the goal, a lot of people just say, you know, forget the system, forget the pattern. I'm not going to do it anymore because I met my goal. Right. And then they get fat again. Easy to do. Yeah. So I if mean, I don't keep that pattern going, right. what happens? You fall to the wayside. Yeah. Your pattern of uh, scripture yeah, or, or being in the word falls to the wayside. You can skip one day and the next day you right. realize... The next time you get in the Word, you say, well, hey, it's four days later and I haven't been there. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start to feel the effects of, oh, yeah. Yeah, of that yeah. pattern being yeah. missed. Yeah. So it, when pain and suffering or challenges come along in life, if I don't already have a system established, it's going to be very difficult for me to deal with the challenges Well, life. yeah. And, you know, like, for instance, if you have a challenge with uh, one of your children. Yeah. And I'm not talking about normal everyday challenges. I'm talking about major challenges, right. like rebellion and, and not uh, bad grades, uh, right. or a D on a test, or, or something substance like that, yeah. abuse, or, right. or anything like that. Um, we have to have something that gives us strength. So, if I ask you this, Max, so ask if, what everyone. I'll, if you I'll have a, answer. if you have a, if you have a child that has a substance abuse issue. And over the years, you're trying to help this child. And then it's year after year, after year, after year. And the next thing you know, it's 15 years. Yes. What's that do to you spiritually? Well, we have a choice regardless of our life circumstances. Yeah. Okay. What does it do to you spiritually? Uh, handled in the proper way, it draws you closer to God. Right. Handled in the right way. Because way. without him, it is just totally frustrating. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and having to address those issues and not having him to go to, I can't imagine what it would be like. Right. Uh, for me personally, um, God encourages us to find a person that he has made us to be. Yeah. You so and, what, and many of those challenges this had caused me to have to turn inward to find my identity in Christ. So he I know what he's doing in my life. Yeah. Because you know, dealing with these circumstances which you know, you deal with it every day, you know yeah. exactly what it's like. But. So God might use God might use problems, challenges, addiction in my child's life to change me. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I see that he has done in my life. So he's made me into someone different because of that. So my intent, my original intent was to help my child get better. For lack of a better word to, to fix him. Yeah. Fix it. Right. Right. And I hate to, right. My, 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 you know, I'm, I'm the one that need to be fixed. Right. It wasn't, you know, of course he has issues in his life and he needs to deal with them. Yeah. But I'm the one that needs to be. Because you can't really change him. No. You can only change. You can only affect you. Right. Yeah. At some point you realize you're going to be on the sideline. Right. You're not going to be the major 
authority in their life. I you tell know? I tell parents all the time, Max, is you can't fix your child. You can't fix your spouse. I can't fix your child. It doesn't stop you from trying. Right, right, right. And it does. <laughs> and we should. But but what frustrates us is, and we should, you know, the Bible tells us that we're to bear one another's burdens. Right. We're to help one another. We're right. to lift one another up. We're to, we're to point out sin. Right. And we're to do that. But it also tells us that then we're to leave it to God for the results. I go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 through 26. Mm. In there where then God says, you know, we're to do these things, we're to love them, we're to teach them, we're to encourage them, we're not to get angry with them. That's the easy thing to do. But it tells us that when they're caught up in that snare, and in this case, we'll use addiction, that when we're caught up in that snare, that we're to do those things to help them. But then those same verses then tell us, but it's God's job to do the fixing. Mm. True that. It's God's job. To do and, and the tremendous resource that we have is that we're joint heirs with Christ. Yeah. Okay. So God has given us the tools yep. to use if we were willing to take advantage of it or, or willing to allow it to be a part of our life. So we have, yep. you know, out of that, I have been able to find the purpose that God is for me to fulfill, whatever that is. Right. You know? Right. And um, that is to still be the parent, to still love. And not be angry. Yeah. Huge challenge with yeah, that one. Sure. For, with for many of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to be aware of the plan that God's included me in. And I also have to realize he's been merciful to me. Yeah. That's because good. I have issues in my own life that don't have anything to do with my children. You have problems, man? No, well, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all have them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and and to learn from you to be an encourager, and also to spend a lot of time in prayer. Yeah, you know, and I, and Max gives me books, and I think that's one sitting over there on my shelf. He gives me books on prayer. He gives me books to help me with my prayer. He gives me because we need. Mm. Boy, I was <laughs> I was kind of convicted yesterday, Max. Mm. We had a a lunch at the church for Next Step, you know, right. a community lunch, and. Um, we were having problems with some of the audio visual system. You know, I think I was sharing with you the same audio visual system that we use on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, all of a sudden Thursday night wouldn't work oh, or Thursday, great. Thursday for the lunch wouldn't work and we needed it. And, uh, I'm scrambling and I'm calling and I'm getting people. And one of the guys, one of the next step guys looks at me and he goes, Todd, you know how to fix this? And I said, how? He goes, Dear Heavenly Father, we're asking you right now that you come and you help us with this situation. And I looked at him and I said, you're exactly right. That's right. We've done everything but pray. And what did we do before we had all that? I, I know. I know. Yeah. We, we, we made it happen. We just did. <laughs> and so we had to go without yeah. that. Yeah, we had to yeah. go without that. But right. you're right. Prayer, many times it's our last resort, but it's the first, it's the first mm. resort. So, yeah. So, yeah. So a problem, a challenge, a major life challenge with a child is intended, could be intended to change us. Well, there's no doubt that it was intentional by God right. to do that. Uh, first of all, our children are adopted. So, you know, right. God provided that yeah. to be a part of our life. And he intentionally put these in there, knowing ahead of time, the challenges gonna, that were going to come. Yeah. God wasn't, God's not sitting there going, oh, I didn't know this was going to happen. Oops. No. Sorry, Max. <laughs> no. You know, and it's a process really, you know, yeah. um, uh, some of the plagiarizing that I'm doing, but it is a process. You know, we have problems, we have challenges, yep. we have disappointments. Those are always going to come. And I, I don't know of anyone that doesn't have those in their life. Right. You know, so my perspective on it has to change. And that's what I really came for when I came to RU. I came to right. get my son fixed. Yeah. Uh, the challenges that he had in his life when he was like 15 years old. Right. But God began to help me realize that I need to work on my own challenges. On Max's challenge. In my relationship with him. I went through the same thing with my sister, you know, yeah. and the whole same process. And I'll never forget, you know, helping my sister through this process and realizing in the process of trying to help my sister. And for a while, it was very frustrating. Oh, yeah. I'm like, why can't you just do what we're asking right. you to do? And then I realized, man, I've got 
some issues that I need to address in my own life. Mm. And God used my sister to point me in a direction that I thought that I would, I, if I planned out my life, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Oh, there's if, no way. Yeah, there, right. Yeah. You know, people ask me all the time, well, how'd you end up in addiction ministry and recovery? And, and I'm like, how much time do you have? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't, God did. Yeah. Right. And that's right. God uses children, siblings, right. loved ones. I, I say often God used cancer in my father-in-law's life mm. to change my direction at one Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Used cancer that the doctors basically told him he didn't have long to live. And then he lived another 10 years. Wow. And I look back and I'm like, cause the original, for me, the original intent of that cancer was to get me to change directions. Mm. And I'm like, mm. wow, God, you would do that. Oh, I have a friend who's having that experience right now with his wife. Yeah. You know, right. And God, and he's using it for God's glory. And exactly. I'm just like, yeah. how in the world do you do I think that? I know who you're yeah. referring to. Yeah. yeah. Powerful, yeah. powerful story. That would be another, I, I need to get him out here. Oh man. Yeah. He would be great. Oh, he would. He would be really, really, oh, that would be a powerful story. But that's, yeah. uh, we'll get to that one day with him probably, man. Um, but yeah, you know, and in, in through our time at Next Step, just dealing with the men at Next Step, I tell the guys all the time, you, they teach me so much more than I will ever teach them. You know, so many times they come with life stories that you would have never imagined <laughs> no. in your lifetime that oh my this word. would happen with people. Right. It's it's just amazing to me. And uh, you can't make this stuff up. No. And, and you're like, what in the world are people thinking? Yeah. And they're not. Right. Yeah, I time. wasn't thinking. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, we have access to God. He's our joint. We're joint heirs with him. We have a building. We got to stop saying that you know yeah. we can't do it. Yep. Um, we got to make sure that we're not emotionally and spiritually lazy. Yeah. Um, Emotional and spiritual laziness is <laughs> defines our culture. Oh, no doubt. And you know, these are other people's ideas. They're not mine. That's a, that's okay. You know, yeah. like I said, we're great thieves around here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, what's our assignment? Yeah. Is our assignment? Become like Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's a major assignment if you really think about it. Yeah. The, our job is, is, you know, Jesus' job is to save us. Right. Our job is to become more like him. Yeah. Every day. That's, and it's not being super parent and everyone says, oh, what a great parent right, you are. That's right. Because God took that and gave me humility instead. <laughs> and, you know, it's not like. My goal is for my son to become a college baseball player. Right. Who, which he was an excellent baseball player and could have done it. You know, God just says, well, you know, we're going to take your pride and we're going to do something else with it. Yeah. You know, wow. Mm. Yeah, oh. that's good. So, you know, we really need to become aligned. You know, alignment determines assignment. Yeah. So if we're aligned with Christ or with challenges in our life, even if you have a sibling who takes her own life. Right. Has right. suffered with addiction and takes her own life. God is still sufficient. Right. You know, he'll mm. take your pain. He'll allow you to use it to minister to somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, I found that, you know, through my challenges with my children, challenges with my siblings, whatever it is, you know, you always, when you are open and you talk about that with an individual, many times they have those same challenges in their own life that's and they right. don't talk yeah. about it and when you when somebody hears your heart and then they feel like they can share their heart i heard a story yesterday it kind of ties into that kind of funny this guy was a, a cia agent and his job was to recruit more cia cia agents right. and he was failing at it he was terrible he basically you're in sales yeah. Right. And he's a terrible sale. He said, when I was a kid, I worked for my dad who was in sales and I was a terrible salesman. He said, and then he said, uh, and I finally had this one last meeting with this woman that we were trying to get to come be a, an agent for the CIA. She was from another country and we needed her mm. to be a spy in that country. And I sat down with her and gave her the sales pitch. And she basically looked at me and said, no, I don't want that. My country will kill me right. if I do that. You know, if they catch me. And then he, he was so discouraged that he said that he finally just started to share his heart with the woman. 
And he said, you know, I'm terrible at this and I'm, I'm probably going to get fired. And he just pours his heart out to her about how bad he is. <laughs> she calls him back a week later and says, I'll take the job. There you go. <laughs> and the reason was, is because she said, because of how genuine he was around his, he stopped being a salesman and he just started being genuine about his own and isn't life. Isn't that how God works? Yeah. You know, when we, when we really finally admit and say, you know, I am so terrible at this. I'm not good at this. I'm not equipped for that. Yeah. That is when God comes in. And, that, and then he says, now I can do some work. I'm sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. For you. Yeah. God, I'm, you not, know, I, I'm not doing well at this. <laughs> um, I say that every day down the next step, I think. you know, <laughs> I don't how, doubt it. How do I, how do I handle this? And how do right. I do this? And, right. But um, yeah, I mean, in, in God, especially when it's our children, man. Oh, that is so. That's different. a different kind of pain, really. Yeah. Um, it just goes really deep. But uh, I, I have to be honest that uh, through that, and you know, at one time I even thought we even thought that um, my son had passed away. Right. Right. I know. We didn't know where he was. Didn't know where he was. Didn't know missing. Yeah. And didn't know where he was. Right. Didn't know. Hadn't heard from him. Right. And and we had seen that happen with. Right. Other people in his life. And, you know, so we just didn't know. Yeah. But God, but God. That's right. Two know. great, two wonderful words. And we and, and we actually have a relationship with him now and he's doing doing much better. Yeah. I know we were talking the other yeah. day and you said that uh, that um, he was making some decisions in his life. That's right. That you we're know. going in a new direction. Like. You know, adult decisions, real, yeah, yeah. real, right, right, right. Real decisions. Yeah. <laughs> decisions that parents want their children to make, right. But you know, right. Sometimes you know, Satan in the, in the moments when you're struggling and you, and things are really, really tough. You know, we got to push away negative thoughts, yeah, and thank God thoughts. And that you takes know, a lot of effort. It's really challenging. Yeah, yeah. Because what we want to do, Max, is we the the negativity and the woe is me is very easy. So easy. Yeah, it's yes. very it's a very very easy path to take. That's why God has to tell us not to take it. True. Because if it was the path that we were going to take naturally, we wouldn't need God to tell us not to take it. Yeah. Yeah. So and we, we think God's it. thoughts. We think grateful thoughts. We praise ourselves into His presence. Yeah. And we get inspiration from his presence. The Bible you know? says that God dwells in praise. Yes. Wow. So so if I want to draw closer to God in times of trouble, I have to praise God in order to, when I don't, it's so really that means tough. when I don't want, yeah. It's tough to do that right. when you're having major challenges. Uh, I still struggle with it, even, you know, with challenges that I have now uh, in different seasons in life. Yeah. And I've got, I'm looking up 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, uh, 58. There was in yeah. what I was reading today. It says, therefore, brothers. Well, let me go back to this other. Yeah, verse. you might want to go back to 57 first. 57. Right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always What's abounding about? in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Yeah, it's not in vain. So when we have those God thoughts, when we have those purposes, yeah, uh, we can feel a sense of accomplishment, even though other things may be a train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> everything yeah. around me is falling apart. Lord, thank you for what you're doing. I'll never forget years ago, Max. You may not remember this guy. There was a guy who came on to our Friday night program, and his house burned down. I don't know if you remember his house burned to the ground that wow. day. That day, not only did his house burn to the ground, but his car was in the garage. Oh, my. He had his business vehicle out that day, so his personal vehicle was in the garage. And his house burned to the ground. And I'll never forget talking to him that night, and he said to me, praise God. Praise wow. the Lord my family's safe. That's right. Praise the Lord that I've got another vehicle. Praise the Lord that, he'll, you know, we had insurance. Praise the Lord that, you know, and his, he never lost a smile on his face. Wow. And I was like, wow. We got some work, powerful. We got some yeah. work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, here's a guy who's, I mean, literally that day, that day, and mm -hmm. he's in church that night. 
Amen. I was like, you know, this is a guy who gets it. This is a guy who says, I'm going to praise God even when everything else is falling apart around me. That's right. That's right. And I was like, oh my word, that was so powerful to me and this huge, huge lesson to me. So, so yeah, so pain and suffering and challenges, they draw us closer to God. You know, pain and suffering can also, Max, I'll just throw this out there. Pain and suffering or challenges or trials, whatever you, whatever, whatever label we want to put on them can also, can they not change our direction? Like I'm going in one direction and now God uses that roadblock to, you know, to put me and I go back to my father-in-law when he got, that's what it, that's what that did to me. Is it, is it, you familiar with, uh, uh, Johnny Erickson Tata? Yes. That, you know, you think about her life. Um, paralyzed from the neck down that's right from age 16 and for many years she was bitter and angry until until she realized that god was going to use her well you know you, you know when you're saying about the bitterness and the challenges that come you see other parents that are quote unquote successful their children are successful right, and you right. see yours and you're you're going where did we go wrong or why could it not yeah, be us? Could right, we not right. just have that? Yeah. But God, God brings glory to him in whatever circumstance it is. So, you know, I've heard people say, God knows you can handle it, right? Or he can handle it. God knows right. that you can handle it through him. He will help you to toughen up. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in order for me to yes. toughen up, I got to go through tough times. That's right. Yeah. But also, you know, in, in this, I've had experiences to, to get involved with Next Step. Right. Get involved right. with some of the guys. Have some fun with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just love on them. Max takes the what guys out on the lake and he throws them off the inner tube off the back of his boat. And, well, yeah. Uh, they love it. They, that does happen. They love yeah. they, they. We had guys out there who we went out there in September and guys who never, I don't think they'd ever been in a bathtub. You know, I think they, they that scared of water. <laughs> they would only take showers, you know. Yeah. And after they saw the boat and the lake and had never been on a boat. Oh, we just they, had a great time. They couldn't wait to get out there. That's that's right. Yep. And then we had chili dogs, and there was not one, you know, crumb of food left. No, if, if, they consumed it all. If you buy a hundred chili dogs, <laughs> they'll eat a hundred chili dogs. It if you great. buy a thousand chili yeah. dogs, they'll eat a thousand That's chili right. dogs. We had a great time. Doesn't matter how much you buy, yeah. they'll eat it all. Yeah. So, and then a friend of mine yeah. came and gave a gospel message for yep. them. Wonderful. And we Wonderful really had time. a we had a great day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and you hit. And again, you get to. You get to hear from these guys. You get to talk to them. You get to sit with them and hear their fears. You know, that's right. You know, these big tough guys tattooed all up, been in prison, and scared to death to go out in the water. You yeah. know, and then they realize that there's nothing scary about it. Really, that's they got right. a life jacket on. You know, they're that's right. they're fine. They're not gonna nobody's gonna drown them. And, and it's just a special joy to interact with them. Yeah, like yeah. It, just it really hear is. them laugh. Oh yeah, have fun. Oh yeah. Um, you know, eat up all the food and, and then really interact and listen and respond to the message that was oh, delivered. Yeah. So it, Absolutely. It, 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 it's so rewarding and you, you wouldn't get to experience that Max, if it hadn't been for what you've been through. That's true. You know, and you know. we don't see that sometimes. You know, when I was a child, my dad established a relationship uh, as he pastored a church yeah. with a men's recovery home, which is still in existence today. And we would go at Christmas time, uh, and mom would bake cakes for them, and right, and, right. Uh, and we would go and and sing Christmas songs. And at that time, we handed out cigarettes. We handed out packs of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I understand why he did that then, and it gave me a perspective on, on why we do it now. Yeah, the purpose is the same. Right, is to restore people and their families. Right, right, and right. encourage them. Yeah, in their walk with Christ. And you never know what somebody's road to that restoration is. That's right. You don't know, you know, what. And so many times they yeah. just need kindness, don't they? Right. Incur- that's why, you know, I, you know I, I said the other night that our purpose on Tuesday nights, our Thrive meetings are on Tuesday night. And uh, I, I, I made a decision that they would be highly, highly encouraging. Oh, yes. And because I we feel that it is so yeah. I need it. You need it. Right. Um, we all need it. And we walk away. And, and, and when you choose to encourage, when you don't want to encourage, it encourages you. Absolutely. It encourages yourself. Yep. And, and, and I have found that in, in my own life that there's times when I haven't felt like encouraging somebody for whatever emotional state I was in. 
And I did it anyway, not out of a heart for doing it, but out of a duty to do it. And then it changed my heart. Absolutely. You know, so some people say, well, isn't that, you know, uh, is it that fake? Well, it, it was at first. Well, sometimes. Yeah, at first it yeah. was, but then it became real. It's, it's, you know, goes back to where we start establishing patterns that right. Right. You know, uh, build those things into our life. Right. It's like you know? giving. Well, I don't feel like giving, right. but once you give, you feel, man, it changes you. So, Max, we're out of time. Our, our camera only holds so much uh, data, yeah. so we're going to end it there. But uh, I appreciate you so being here today. And uh, if you have any questions for Next Step, for me, for Max, you can reach us through our, our website at nextstepmen.org. And uh, we'd love to connect with you. Have a wonderful day.